All right, this video is going to discuss how we put together um, our solutions and making sure that they are linearly independent um, for our second order differential equations. So the first piece of this is making sure that we can identify whether or not a linear differential equation is homogeneous, or some people say homogeneous, meaning there is no right-hand side, or if it's non-homogeneous, then there is a function of x on the right-hand side. Um, let's first look at the superposition principle for homogeneous equations. So for any nth order differential equation, if you know that there is a set of y of x solutions, um, then it must also be true that some linear combination of those solutions is also a solution um, on that same interval. So um, look at this example here. If I have that I know both, um, or I'm going to show that both x squared, x squared and x squared times natural log are solutions, um, and then on what intervals they are defined. So that's what we're going to start with first. All right, so in order to do that, let's start with our y1 first. So um, I need a first derivative. And then it looks like I need a third derivative, which is zero. So when I plug that in, I'm going to get zero minus two x times y prime plus four times y. Is that equal to zero? And yes, it is. All right, let's take the first derivative. We're gonna use some product rule here. And let's clean that up. All right, let's take the second derivative. And again, let's clean that up. C plus three. Right, and then I'm gonna have two over x. All right, let's plug that in. So I would have x cubed times two over x minus two x times y prime plus four y. And I wanna make sure that that is equal to zero. All right, well right here, I'm gonna get two x squared. Here I'm gonna have minus four x squared natural log of x minus two x squared. And these all zero out, so I am good. Now on the intervals, um, I have to have continuity here, which is which is good, but I also have to have continuity here. So I'm only going to say that from zero to in infinity is my interval that I'm looking at because of that natural log piece. All right, the next thing that we would have to check before we can put these together is that they are linearly independent. Um, what that means is that these things, if you put them all in a um, like a constant times y1 plus a constant times y2, da, 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 that they are only equal to zero if a equals b equals the da, 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 is zero. Okay, that there is no way for us to kind of cancel out these y's by just multiplying by a constant. Um, the way that we are going to do this is using the Ronskian. So what the Ronskian has us do is you take your function um, one and then you take all the derivatives, two derivatives, and you wanna take it to the n minus one derivative. So in this case, since I have just those two functions that I'm looking at, I would just take that first derivative and make it a little two by two matrix. Um, and then these lines mean to take the determinant. So I'm going to do y1 times y2 prime 
and then I'm going to subtract out y2 times y1 prime. And I wanna make sure in order for these to be linearly independent, that that Wronskian is not equal to zero. All right, so let's do that for our example here. So I would have x squared and two x. I would have x squared natural log of x. And then what was the derivative when we cleaned it up? Right here, two x natural log. plus x. All right, so this determinant is going to be x squared times the diagonal on the other side, and then I subtract the multiplication of the other diagonal. And I'm on this interval here from 0 to infinity, and the only time this would be equal to 0 is if x was 0. Um, I could distribute this out. These two terms cancel. Yeah, and I don't have zero on my interval, so it's not equal to zero on I. So we're good. So as long as I'm on this interval here, then I'm going to have linearly independent pieces. So this is where the superposition kind of comes into to play here. And we're gonna make like a super function is the way I like to think of it. So that's what we're gonna call the fundamental set is once you have those linearly independent solutions, that's the fundamental set of solutions. And so just to reiterate, all you need to then do is say, oh, well, if I want to figure out what the solution of this is, and I know both of these are part of that fundamental solution set, then I can just say that this is my general solution here. So I just plug in y1 and y2 with a c1 and c2. Like there is some linear combination of these that is equal to y. And I know that that linear combination is never equal to zero. So I never have that like arbitrary solution of just y equals zero. Like we've had some examples in the past. Um, because these two functions are linearly independent from each other. All right, let's look at a non-homogeneous example and talk about what needs to happen. So when I have these pieces here, this y1 to yn, those are all tied to the um, homogeneous piece. And then this piece here, is tied to that non-homogeneous piece or the right hand side because what's going to happen here is when i plug all of these into whatever my linear thing piece is right they're going to be zero because these are solutions for a homogeneous solution so then i need to be like well i need to then have something on this side so that's going to fix it for us all right, so for example, here is a solution and I just want to show you that we are good to go, that that's the solution for this piece. Um, and since we have E's and polynomials, we have this on the entire um, real numbers domain. All right, so let's say then, so then Y1 is E to the two X. taking some derivatives here. And when I plug that, that should be y1 double prime. When I plug that in, I get zero, which I should, um, because this is going to end up being one of our solutions for the non-homogeneous, I'm sorry, excuse me, the homogeneous side, the left-hand side, um, meaning that when I plug it in, I get zero. All right, so let's look here. So y2 prime, derivative of the first, second, um, first derivative of the second, Y1 
And then I gotta do that again. Okay, so I have four e to the two x here. All right, so when I plug this in um, to my left hand side, four e to the two x minus four of this. Plus, oh, I, I missed this part here. Sorry about that. Um, and then plus four of these. You'll see, okay, yes, again, I get zero because these, again, these two pieces are part of the solution actually of the homogeneous side. All right, that means that this part that's left over must be this like YP, okay? for the right-hand side piece. So I'm going to just go ahead and call it that. Looks like it says x squared e to the 2x plus x minus 2. And I want to make sure when I plug that in that it gives me that right-hand side piece because the other two pieces gave me a 0. So this piece right here needs to give me that right-hand side. All right, first derivative. And second derivative. And I can say this is eight. All right, so then if I take this second derivative here, right, that's what I'm plugging in, and I say minus four of this, and then plus four, times y. All right, let's see what that gives me. So I'm going to end up having here what negative 8xe to the 2x. So those would cancel. And I'm going to have negative 8x squared e to the 2x, um, which those would cancel. Notice I have this piece here and this piece here. So that works out. Um, I have a negative 16 that doesn't look like it cancels with anything yet. I have a plus 4x, good. And then a um, plus, oh no, minus. Oh, darn it. Okay, this was a 1. So it should be negative 4. I was like, oh no. Okay, negative 4. Okay, and so that's where my 12 comes in. Good, there we go. So as you can see, the um, non-homogeneous case is a little bit more complicated, um, but as we go throughout the rest of this chapter, we're going to actually learn how all these pieces go together. This is just making sure that once you have a solution curve, that you know how to plug it in and verify that it is an actual solution.